Dear students, I welcome you to this lecture. Today our topic of deliberation is Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Before we proceed, let us have a look on the main objectives of this lecture. Understanding general philosophy of Gopal Krishna Gokhale and understanding the educational philosophy of Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Gokhale, a true liberalist, a rationalistic reformist, was best known as the political guru of Gandhi. Gokhale was born in 1866 at Kolhapur in Maharashtra. He graduated from Elphinstone College, Mumbai in 1884. At the young age of 20, he became professor of history and economics at the Ferguson College, Pune. For four years, he edited the Sudark, a quarterly journal of the Pune Sarvajanik Sabha. In 1904, he was awarded the title of CIE, that is Companion of the Indian Empire. During his visit to England in 1905, he tried to persuade the British statesmen not to give effect to the partition of England. He, however, failed in his efforts. Gopal Krishna Gokhale was one of the social leaders during the Indian independence movement against the British Empire in India. Gokhale was a senior leader of the Indian National Congress and founder of the Servants of Indian Society. Through the society as well as the Congress and other legislative bodies, he served in Gokhale companied for Indian self-rule and also for social reform. Gokhale's life was short and he died without bearing witness to India's independence. But there is little denying that his influence on the people involved in the freedom struggle was immense. For starters, Gokhale and Mahatma Gandhi shared a guru shishya relationship. In an anthology of his writings on Gokhale entitled Gokhale, My Political Guru, Gandhi makes reference to his multifaceted relationship beginning with the first time he met Gokhale in Pune in 1896. In poetic language, Gandhi describes Gokhale, contrasted him to others in the Congress party, thus, but Gokhale was as the gangs. One could have a refreshing bath in the holy river. The Himalaya was unscalable, and one could not easily launch forth on the sea, but the gangs invited one to its bosom. It was a joy to be on it with a boat and an oar. Gandhi often referred him as Mahatma. Muhammad Ali Jinnah was also a fan, saying, It is my ambition to become a Muslim Gokhale. Bal Ganga Dhartilak, considered to be a political rival of Gokhale during his lifetime, said this about Gokhale at his funeral. This diamond of India, the jewel of Maharashtra, this prince of workers taking eternal rest on funeral ground. Look at him and try to emulate him. Dear students, let us know about the major contributions of Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Gopal Krishna Gokhale was an important member of the Indian National Congress during the period before the independence movement. The greatest connection between Gokhale and independence was in his mentorship of Mahatma Gandhi, who is almost universally accepted as the father of an independent India. Despite an illustrious political career, his counseling of Gandhi during his formative political years impacted the independence movement. Gokhale fought for decades to obtain greater political representation and power over public affairs for common Indians. He was moderate in his views and attitudes 
and sought to petition the British authorities by cultivating a process of dialogue and discussion which would yield greater British respect for Indian rights. As a political man, Gokhale was a true liberalist. He was a staunch believer in the moderation and rational transformation. He was convinced that a regeneration of the country could not be achieved by the excitement of radical politics. He believed in constitutionalism and in the purity of aims and purity of actions. Gokhale's primary contribution as a social reformer in the history of India was to be one of the first to actually articulate the need for social reform. Gokhale understood that India was in sore need of social reform at the turn of the century. He recognized that India needed change in the realm of education, social equity and ensuring that the working class in India were still privy to being heard and validated. These are issues that India still struggles with today. Gopal Krishna Gokhale is much known for his works as a social reformer. He encouraged common Indian people to educate themselves. His works in the field of sanitation and public developments are well known. He also worked to stop ignorance, casteism and untouchability in Indian society. Gokhale was also known for building trust and friendship between Hindus and Muslims. He also founded the Servants of India Society, an organization dedicated to the cause of common people of India. This society trained workers for the service of the country. Gopal Krishna was one of the first generations of Indians to receive college education. His works, especially public address on India under the British rule, helped awaken the latent patriotism of Indian people. Gopal Krishna Gokhale as being the foremost among the Congress leaders. Gokhale was one of the India's most respected leaders. He presided over the Varanasi Session Congress in 1905. He was a man with moderate views and had immense faith in British liberalism. Gokhale urged that the goal of the Congress should be the attainment of a form of government similar to that which existed in the self-governing colonies of the British Empire. Dear students, his faith in constitutional means to achieve the goal, Gokhale believed in constitutional agitation, that is, petitions, appeals to justice and passive resistance. At the same time, supported the Savadeshi movement. In his presidential address at the Varanasi session, he said, the true Savadeshi movement is both a patriotic and an economic movement. He made a strong plea for the reform of the legislative councils and separation of judiciary from the executive. In 1905, Gokhale established the Servants of India Society. This society trained men to devote their lives to the cause of the country. Its members were required to create among the people a deep and passionate love of the motherland. The society assisted educational moments, especially those for the education for women. It worked for the elevation of the depressed classes. Arousal of National Awakening In 1902, Gokhale had become the member of the Imperial Legislative Council. In his speeches in the council, he pleaded for reduction in salt duty and the abolition of excise duty on cotton goods. In 1910 and 1912, he moved resolutions in the Imperial Legislative Council for relief to Indian bonded labor in Natal. In one of his budget speeches, he pleaded for free primary education for all children of Indian society. Gokhale would 
like Indians, to be given a large share in Indian civil service. Students, now let us know about the economic ideas of Gokhale. Gokhale was deeply pained to see the increasing misery of the peasantry. He pleaded for the reduction of land revenue. Gokhale was in favor of state protection to infant Indian industries. He called for the employment of members of educated middle class. Gokhale had great reverence for Pharaoh's Mehta. As he said, I would rather be wrong with Pharaoh's Shah than right without him. Gokhale died in 1915 at a premature age of 49. Now let us have a look on what Gokhale said about education. Gokhale insisted on the importance of human capital and education. He was the first in India to describe mass education as a prerequisite for economic development. He fought all his life for the extension of education in India, writing, speaking, and sometimes legislating in favor of female education, technical and higher education, but above all, primary education. Without mass education, he believed it, India could not develop. As he put it in his speech on the budget statement of 1903, an ignorant and illiterate nation can never make solid progress. The primary purpose of mass education was, he believed, to banish illiteracy from the Indian land. The view of literacy as an element of human capital runs through all of Gokhale's writings on economic matters. His arguments in favor of mass education had emphasized the role of mass education as an investment as well as a reward by higher consumption. He was aware that compared to the costs, the returns to the society by education in terms of development were substantial. His writings and speeches indicate that he could be considered a pioneer in the field of economics of education. Gokhale declared that the spread of primary education means the future salvation of, of our country. Universal education could help the farmer to resist exploitation by the money lender, to improve sanitation, to shake off superstition, to increase his earning capacity and to take an intelligent interest in public affairs. He introduced elementary education bill in 1911 in the Imperial Legislative Council. He argued that the costs of universal elementary education would be minimal and affordable if implemented through schools run by local bodies. Funds could be found by economizing on civil and military administration. Gokhale's Bill on Primary Education Gopal Krishnan Gokhale, the veteran nationalist leader of India, realized the inherent utility of compulsory education and submitted a private bill before the Imperial Legislative Council on the 18th March 1910 to provide for the compulsory education. It was a brief and simple document ingeniously devised to meet the important objections then leveled by the government against the proposal. Gokhale's bill, the first ever attempt to introduce free and compulsory primary education in our country, is a landmark in the history of education in India. It was in 2010 while delivering a speech on the occasion of addressing Right to Education Act in 2010, ex-Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh said, About a hundred years ago, a great son of India, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, urged the Imperial Legislative Assembly to confer on the Indian people the right to education. Although the bill was rejected, it focused the attention of the entire country on education. 
the bill of gokhale suggested that number 1 an act should be passed authorizing the local bodies to take initiative in the matter and with the sanction of government to introduce free and compulsory education as soon as a suitable background is preferred number 2 compulsion should be introduced in case of boys only in the first instance and it should be extended to girls at a later date as public opinion become sufficiently educated to absorb the idea number 3 compulsory education should be restricted to a period of 4 years only in the first instance 6 to 10 years as in japan number 4 compulsion should be introduced in an area where 33% of the school going age are already in the schools number 5 the provincial government should bear two thirds of the total expenditure involved in the scheme of compulsion although the endeavors put forth did not bring immediate results yet gokhale earned the right to be considered as the father of the movement for compulsory education in india whatever might be the fate of the bill his attempts created and molded the public opinion and drew their attention to the cause of the education in general and compulsory education in particular the seed sown up by him came up for harvest during 1910 to 1917 there was unprecedented growth of primary education on a voluntary basis their students to conclude let us make an emphasis on the fact that gopal krishna gokhale was one of the pioneering leaders in the indian independence movement he was one of the founding social and political leaders who fought all his life for india's from the british empire he was a leader with moderate reformist views who aimed at achieving not only independence from british raj but also endeavored to bring social reforms in the indian society and political reforms within the government institutions through nonviolent means through his relentless petitions agitations and persuasions he was able to influence the britishers to recognize the capabilities of educated indians and include them in the governing process throughout his life gokhale was involved with a wide range of public and legislative bodies he served in the imperial legislative council became the president of the indian national congress and founded the famed servants of the indian society he also influenced greatly the two important personalities of indian national movement m k gandhi and mohammad ali jinnah both of whom regarded gokhale as their mentor with this we conclude today's program on gopal krishna gokhale hope you have enjoyed the lecture thanks for watching goodbye